Hello, my name is Amy Wood. I'm the executive director of the Raymond A. Wood Foundation, and we're excited to come together today to talk about the first uh, research study that has been published, um, Caregiver Burden and its Relationship to Health-Related Quality of Life in Craniopharyngioma Survivors. This was published last week, and we are joined, I am joined today by Eugenie Shu, our board chair, and Natalie Kayajanian, our scientific advisor, who are both co-authors of the study. And we're gonna talk about some key points of the study, um, some interesting findings, and what this means to our craniopharyngioma patient community. So let's get started. First of all, Eugenie, I just wanted to um, have you talk a little bit about what was the reason for conducting this study in the first place to analyze the caregiver's experience of this disease. Yeah, a couple of years ago when we decided to do the study, we were thinking about how the caregiver's perspective is a unique one in that um, as caregivers, we have a very intimate view of what our survivors go through because we are living with them and we are caring for them on a daily basis. Um, so we wanted to uh, investigate um, what the caregiver's perspective is. And we also wanted to acknowledge that there's a lot of stress involved in caregiving. So we wanted to um, be able to actually measure the amount of, of um, hardship and, and burden there is on the caregiver from the disease. Um, with that, we used our unique perspective to generate a list of 29 different symptoms. Um, some of the symptoms are very typical and were, um, were gotten from just what we know in the literature, things like the different kinds of um, uh, hormone deficiencies, uh, visual impairment, uh, obesity. These are things that are well documented in the literature, but we also came up with things that are not really in the literature, but more discussed in um, the support group. So these are things like skin problems. Um, there's a lot of um, different kinds of psychiatric uh, conditions. Um, and uh, we wanted to include those things as well. So um, having that uh, information is really uh, important to share. So that's another reason why we wanted to do the study so that we could publish the results in um, a prestigious journal and have it read by our stakeholders so that we can improve uh, treatment uh, for our survivors. Thanks, Eugenie. Natalie, um, can you explain the study design for us? Yeah, thanks, Amy. Um, yeah, so in this study, we wanted to assess the impact of craniofrangioma on caregivers. And so for that, we chose to measure caregiver burden which is a complex uh, and multidimensional uh, concept to really capture the multiple strains on, on caregivers. Uh, so we use the Zeroid Burden Interview, which is a tool that has been originally developed to measure caregiver burden in Alzheimer's disease, but is now used for many uh, different diseases. The second goal of the study was to really assess and investigate what are the determinants of caregiver burden in craniofrontioma. So we investigated whether the sociodemographics of the survivors and the caregivers uh, impacted significantly caregiver burden, but we also look at whether the clinical manifestations or the symptoms that affect survivors could also impact caregiver burden. So with all this, we developed an anonymous online survey and we collected data for two months at an international level. And we were very pleased to be able to analyze the data of a substantial number of participants. We got 82 participants. Great, thank you. Um, so in your analysis, Natalie, what tell us a little bit about the key findings and what did you find to be surprising? Yeah, so maybe I'm going to talk about the three, maybe most surprising findings of this study. Um, so first of all, we found that although the caregiver burden is modest in craniofrangioma, it's much higher than caregiver burden measured in Alzheimer's disease or, or dementia. The second thing that we found is that the sociodemographics of the survivors and the caregivers, such as income, the caregiver duration, the age of the survivors or the, or the caregivers didn't impact caregiver burden. 
But in contrast, we found that the number and the type of health problems that affected survivors following tumor treatment really impacted significantly caregiver burden and also uh, impacted the health-related quality of life of the survivors. And we also strikingly found that uh, the health-related quality of life of the survivors predicted caregiver burden. So this means that if we could alleviate or address the symptoms of the survivors, we could reduce caregiver burden. And then the, the third uh, maybe surprising findings that maybe will not be so surprising for the majority of caregivers is that thanks to what Eugenie um, talked about, the list of symptoms uh, that was developed not only based on what is known in the literature, but also uh, based on uh, reports from caregivers, we were able to identify hyperphagia as a critical and met need. Hyperphagia is, is really an insatiable desire for food. And we found that more than 50% of survivors uh, had hyperphagia, and also that 70% of survivors with obesity had hyperphagia. So this was the first time that the percent, the proportion of patients with craniofrangioma with hyperphagia were, was measured. And remarkably, what we found is that hyperphagia, but not obesity, significantly increased caregiver burden and uh, uh, significantly reduced the health-related quality of life of survivors. So this really study really separated hyperphagia from obesity and really identified hyperphagia as a critical unmet need. So just to reiterate that, most caregivers reported that it wasn't the obesity that was the challenge, it was the hyperphagia. So, you know, a lot of times we look at those as a combination, but we're seeing them as exclusive issues from each other. Yeah, that's correct. Um, Eugenie, from a caregiver perspective, what surprised you? What were your feelings as you were seeing um, this data and reviewing it? Yeah, there were some things that uh, um, surprised and maybe some things that really were not surprising, but were confirmatory. So um, one thing that we found because we were studying caregiver burden um, was that the based on the scores um, that we got from the Zare uh, burden uh, interview, um, it's possible that 80% of our caregivers may be at risk for depression. So um, it's it, it's it's confirmatory and surprising at the same time. That's a very high number of people. And at the same time, not that surprising um, because those of us who have been caregivers can really appreciate the, the difficulty of the task. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So it's something that we caregivers have to be mindful of. <clears throat> So that was one thing. Another um, another finding that uh, actually also uses the, the number 80 is that we also um, had uh, in our subject pool um, some adult survivors uh, that were represented. And one thing we found was that over 80% of the subjects over 18 were still living at home with their families of origin and were medically dependent. And most of them, um, most a great majority of our subjects at, at any age, were medically dependent on their caregivers. So this is a really significant finding too, because um, although many parents uh, expect, uh, you know, normally that their children will grow up and become independent and live on their own, that may not be the case for those of us who have um, craniopharyngioma survivors. So again, it underlines that it's it's a marathon, not a sprint. And um, that is just a very significant finding, I think. Definitely. Um, Natalie, so what's next? How do these, how does this study impact future research? Where do we go from here? Yeah, that's a good question. So, so of course, the, the first this is the first study that really measure caregiver burden in craniofrangioma. Uh, and as, as we said before, we found that uh, uh, that the caregiver burden is significant, 
So this warrants to de the development of better support for, uh, for caregivers. So that's one area of research. The second one, um, as, I as we mentioned before, hyperphagia is a critical unmet need, and this really study uh, revealed it. But we know very little about uh, hyperphagia in this population. So we feel that we are really well positioned as a research-driven patient organization to further characterize hyperphagia in this population. And maybe the third area of research, um, I think that given the importance of collecting the patient's and the caregiver's voice or the perspective of the patient and caregivers on the impact of the disease, the treatments and other unmet needs, uh, we are developing a patient registry for survivors of hypothalamic pituitary tumors to really uh, collect a rich set of uh, evidence-based data that we hope will really guide the research agenda and also drug development around the needs of the patients and the caregivers. Thank you. Eugenie, um, from a caregiver perspective, is there hope in this research? How does this benefit the patient community? What are your thoughts there? Um, as far as um, having the paper be able to give us some hope, I do think that um, there is always um, value in in opening our eyes to things. And um, even though the the paper revealed some sobering things, um, as an example, the the high the possibly high rates of depression in our caregivers. Um, it is very validating to know this and for our caregivers uh, to know that they're not alone. Um, so I do think that it's something that we need to do as caregivers is to also take care of ourselves and possibly even to um, have our mental health um, depression um, evaluated and treated if that is the case. So um, we definitely need to use this information to um, inform um, how we treat ourselves uh, as caregivers. Um, Another issue that I think has uh, that that may be helped is because of the long term effects of, on on our patients, on our survivors, um, and the fact that you know a great number of adult uh, survivors uh, may still be dependent on their parents on their families. It may also help um, our patients, our families apply for disability and to to be able to confirm that yes, um, some survivors have disabling conditions and may need support um, from SDI and uh, whatever else um, they can get. So um, hopefully that can um, facilitate that application process. And um, lastly, I just think that this is a, just a great start for our foundation um, to share our very important patient and caregiver voice with the world. And um, I know that we won't stop doing that, but this is um, just a, an example of how we can do that. I think too, just, um, you know, having the fact that this is in black and white, it's in print. These are the things we're dealing with as caregivers. This is what we see in our loved ones, or our children help us when we are approaching providers and um, having these discussions, because it shows that there's, that we're not, I, I think it feels like I'm not alone in this. You're not alone in this. The, we are all sharing these experiences and they need to be further considered for, you know, more support, more research and, and in kind of addressing these issues. Um, any I, other, yeah, any other final thoughts or comments you'd like to make? I'll open the floor to either of you. First of all, I really want to thank all the caregivers who particip participated to this study. Uh, without them, this study wouldn't have been possible. And also, I would like to stress the fact of how important it is to make your voice heard through this type of study and, and soon through the registry. So it will be really important to, you know, please stay tuned. And uh, we hope that the registry will be open towards the end of this year. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that's a really important point is that this work continues and we will be asking the patient community to, to chime in even more on, on questions so we can get even more data to support our um, 
efforts to try to find solutions to these unmet needs. So thank you both for joining me today. Thank you for your hard work on this. We um, are so grateful and we hope that anyone watching this takes time to read and share the report. We'll have it linked along with this video. So thank you very much. Thank you.